Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is John Patton, and this behind me is the Patton from Wolf Rigs. Let's take a look. All right, guys, we're here with Reed. Reed is the man behind this project. Reed, can you tell me what your official title is here? Uh, well, I'm the owner, uh, and uh, I guess I uh, took the title of CEO. But... CEO, owner, <laughs> head guy in charge. Right. Okay, so we're looking at the general patent rig. We're going to do the exterior walkthrough first. Okay. Tell me all about it. I want to know everything. You want the whole backstory and everything? Yes, the whole the thing. The whole thing. So, Wolf Rigs came to be about four years ago. Uh, we incorporated uh, three years ago. And we were really starting to do, we started out doing schoolie builds. And it was really from, I came from a, a residential construction background, doing kitchens, baths, additions, uh, that kind of thing, basements. And uh, really kitchens and baths were kind of my niche. So, uh, my youngest daughter was up at Fort Collins and she called and said, hey, I'm not gonna come home for the summer. And I'm staying up here indefinitely because I want to finish my college uh, degree and get moving. So, got off the phone. I was like, my wife and I were up to yesterday now, so it was official. So at that point, uh, my wife and I talked about getting an RV. So we started looking around at RVs. And I was so disappointed with the quality of the builds, the builds that are out there, and just, just in general, the the industry as a whole just seems like they're just putting garbage out. They're very, very much okay with stuff that falls apart right and i knew where i wanted to go with it and i knew what i wanted to do and uh it just it wasn't going to suit our needs so i came across uh spoolies <laughs> kind of by accident and i got all excited because i said hey it's a steel structure they're designed to be hit by trains have you ever seen a video of what an rv does in an accident it'll scare the pants off of you they're being one again anyway <laughs> so i told my wife um hey you know, one afternoon, I said, "Hey, um, we're selling all of our stuff. We're gonna sell the house. We're gonna build a, a school bus or build a schoolie out of a school bus, and we're gonna travel the country." She's like, "I'm not living in a school bus." <laughs> so next morning, she comes back. I'm in the shower. She goes, "Okay, I'm in." I'm like, "You're getting divorced last night. What happened?" She goes, "Well, I know what you can build. If you build me this, start pointing to Pinterest photos." And Rest, as they say, is history. But I uh, and then this was born out of that concept. I'd say that's uh, that's pretty slick. There's, there's one more step. Okay. So I'm a schoolie palooza, and we're getting ready to build four by four sprinter vans as a company. And this was the direction we were going to go in. I'm out in Moab on my way back to schoolie palooza. This is right when I met Mike. This is uh, uh, February of 2001, and the uh, the lack of ability of a four by four sprinter van is. It, it's they can go on dirt roads. That's about it. You get them on on any trail in Moab, especially on a washout, they'll the, they'll rip the bottom end of it out. So uh, I had a, a quick chat with my friend Jax Austin, uh, who actually gave me the inspiration for this. He said, "Once you build an overland vehicle on a Humvee chassis," I was like, "That's an amazing idea." I got to work on it immediately. We got back to the shop and uh, started drawing it up, catting it up, and it was, I think it was in. Uh, May or June of that year, we bought our first Humvee, this one actually, and uh, because I wasn't sure what we were going to do, so I kept the original engine in it, which will never happen again, <laughs> ever, and uh, because if you've ever driven these things, they're loud, they're obnoxious, they're inefficient, the whole nine years, I'm not going to go into that anymore. So, right after I get the, uh, the skeleton done, I started talking to Mike more, and I literally was like, hey dude, let's just team up on this, let's build these things together. I love to have your help uh, get here to Colorado. Next thing you know, uh, by the time he showed up, we had new shops. This is our, our new shop. Uh, we were just getting ready to put the skin on. Actually, we were in the process of putting all the skin on. And I think the day he showed up, we had actually gotten the back doors on uh, officially. So everything was kind of dried in, so to speak. But it wasn't painted. So uh, Mike came in, helped me with some electronic uh, decisions that we made, changed a few things. And the next thing you know, here we are. It, uh, it was finished in July of this year. It was, the, it was the official kickoff date, and uh, it was actually my birthday, July 6th. I got in the vehicle and I drove up to Bend, Oregon, for the for the uh, Pacific Northwest over the next boat. And that was his first like debut. Awesome, and it awesome. Just at the uh, Mountain West, which is where we got to meet in person. I met. That was super exciting. I love this. The name is not the only reason I like this. <laughs> that is a good portion of it, but okay. <laughs> so. What, what is the chassis underneath for the undereducated folks out there? What is this at the core? So, the ones we sell, anyone use any 
pattern you see going forward, it is not a surplus military vehicle. They may have started that way. However, the company we get it from, or if whatever company we get it from, they tear it down to the frame. They okay. go through every bolt, every bushing, everything. The, the uh, portal hubs are all redone. All new axles, all new drive shafts, uh, half shafts. So it's a sort of refreshed vehicle? Is that accurate? It is a remanufactured Humvee. Okay. Yes. So you get brand new everything. We put a 50,000 mile warranty on it, which I... The, one of the companies that we're uh, dealing with, I think they do put a three-year unlimited mile warranty on it, which that's fine either way, but that's just for the chassis. Okay. Okay, we put a 30-year warranty on our top. 30-year? So, I don't know if you heard that. Uh, I can barely hear it because it's built like a rock. So this is Like, all, legit, that's, that's right. super quiet. So this is all aluminum. Okay. And we built... I wanted something that was built so tough that you literally could hand this down to generations. So you know, we've actually dubbed it a legacy vehicle. Wow. So from this point forward, it, it, it's not you're not going to hurt this. You're going to hit this on a tree or a rock. You might put a scratch or a dent in it, but you're not going to do any real damage to it. It'll always be the same. And, and if you do put a scratch or a small dent into it, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that was the trail I went, and I just, oh, my gosh, I thought we weren't going to live through it. But, <laughs> but the patent got us through. It's a little bit of character. A lo- little bit of character, whereas uh, most of my other competition, they, they come in, they do a fiberglass or a uh, uh, carbon fiber top. And if you know anything about those products, you know, they're only as good as the resin that, you, that they put together. And even then, it's kind of like an eggshell. That if you hit it on something hard, it's going to either poke through it or it's going to you know, damage it to the point where you're going to have to have a repair. And that's, you know. So in terms of like a, like a bug out vehicle or sort of as, as people like to abuse the zombie apocalypse, we that get, sort of thing, get this that is... All the time. I get asked, why would you put a 50 cal on top of this thing? So... I mean, I agree. I agree. <laughs> why not? It would be super cool. And yeah, why not? So on the roof... Yeah, thing, like, look, uh, the headlights need to drop away yeah. and a, a rifle needs to come out of the front. You That'd know, be ridiculous. James Bond style. <laughs> totally agree. So we actually had a skylight up above the... Uh, we saw that from the inside. We did. From the inside. So that really is it doubles as your ability to be able to get up on the roof, uh, to be able to clean the solar panels, uh, sit up there, you know, whatever. Um, and also, it's really nice to be able to sleep under the stars. So yeah. it, it serves multiple purposes. How much solar, you said solar, how much solar do you have on this rig? 800 watts of solar on this rig. 800 watts? Yes. Is that going to be what you do in the production models? Um, yes. However, solar and battery technology keep evolving. And it's Absolutely. crazy how fast it goes, which is awesome. I keep getting asked, when are you going to make an electric version? Oh, wow. There will never be an electric version until solar and battery technology catch up to the point where you can charge it while you're driving. Okay? That makes sense. Yeah, so, that makes sense. Right now, it is it is physically impossible. I know Ford's having problems with uh, their truck, where you basically at a full charge and you're towing something. It's like having three gallons of gas in your tank. Wow. You're not going to go anywhere. So, and I don't want to bash them or anything, but it's just the technology. It's right not now, there yet. It's, it's just, just not, not there. there yet. It'll get there. It's kind of like when flat screens first came out. Sure. Right? They sucked. They were awful, they were problematic, and you know they were $10,000 for a small one. Now, you can't find a tube television, and you, and you can get a huge you know, flat screen TV like the one we have here in the shop for a couple hundred bucks. So in this, it is not electric. No. <laughs> What's the power plant? So our base model comes with, it's uh, actually a Cummins, a Turbo Cummins uh, 3.9, it's the 4BT. Okay. Okay, and that engine will produce We've been told 275 to 325 horsepower, depending on how you clock it. Um, so somewhere in that somewhere vis- in that range, we've been telling people 300 just to kind of you know, sure. give an average. And because of the portal axles, you double the torque. Wow. Okay, so you get 600 horsepower or 600 uh, foot pounds. Foot pounds torque. So uh, and with the and I was thinking about the upgraded uh, 6.6 Duramax. Which again clocks in between 575 and 625, which we just tell people 600 horsepower. So is that something you're going to offer the the Duramax in this? Yes, we'll offer the Duramax. This particular one, because it's mine, is getting the Duramax. I like to daily drive it, and I want to be able to chirp the wheels. The second yeah, year. sure. <laughs> I'm I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Uh, one thing about that, you take the range down. Okay. Right? Because as soon as you take gas mileage down, you take your range down. Uh, one thing, uh, the consideration for this, because you can go out in the middle of nowhere, I want people to go out in the middle of nowhere and be able to get back. 
right? That so makes sense. If you, get, if you have something out there that gets eight miles, nine miles to the gallon, you're gonna have to carry a lot of fuel to get out and back. Whereas with this, because it's so, you know, it, it just sips the, the fuel uh, as, as a as a relation to a lot of, uh, of other vehicles that are out there, um, you don't have to carry as much fuel. Therefore, how much? Uh, what's the capacity of fuel on this? So the capacity of fuel on this is actually 30 gallons on the regular tank. And we have another 10 gallons of storage back in the back that we offer. What are the, the wheels and tires that we've got on here? So uh, one thing that was nice, the Wheel Pros approached us uh, early on, and they wanted to partner with us, and uh, one of their lines is uh, Black Rhino Wheels. Okay. So they had another line they wanted to, I said, no, it didn't really, it was more pretty than it was rugged. And the Black Rhino Wheel, uh, this is the Arsenal, um, because we're not so heavy, we don't need a, a crazy B-blocking wheel or a crazy, you know, uh, uh, really tough sidewall uh, you know, that'll hold 12,000 pound uh, tire. It's also not an M wrap or something like right. that. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's not so meant to be. We're not we're not going into a battle zone. I'm I'm planning on camping with this. I'm planning four wheeling with this. Which as soon as we get the Duramax in here, we'll take this up crazy trails that uh, you know I've been four wheeling since I was a kid. Sure. So sure. Uh, cool. Okay, so we've got the Black Rhino wheels. Those are Falcon tires on there that are substantial. Yeah, they are. And uh, we went back and forth on the Nitos. The Nitos weren't available when we wanted them, so we put these on there. And these wear like nails. I'm really, I was quite surprised. These tires have done really well. Do you know what you plan to offer for uh, your, your production models? So the production models, I think it's going to be a, a client choice. I will steer them towards the Black Rhino rim just because I think they look cool. Uh, one, secondly, they, they perform really well off-road, and uh, they they support us really well. So sure. all those three things really come to, it's, it's a good marriage. Relationships matter. Yes. That's cool. Let's keep walking around the outside here. Uh, that looks to me like sort of a, a pocket for an armored window. Is that <laughs> still a thing? Like, are, so, we, are we selling an armored, because that would be exciting. So, so these doors, <laughs> uh, they're aluminum, and these are made by uh, the company we get these from. And they're pretty basic. Okay. The, the ones we're going to put on there, they're going to be uh, the eighth inch uh, wall, but they're going to have a lot more uh, nice of the amenities. This was done. Really so a little more finished out. They're going to be a lot more finished out. Okay. So they'll look like a regular door, the regular window. And uh, actually the ones that they, they sell are armor plated, and they do offer a bulletproof glass. So is, this is not bulletproof. we need to, in the future, we're going to look for Something from Wolf Rakes that is literally indestructible, impenetrable, and uh, well, one, <laughs> I want armored windows everywhere, Reed. Well, one of the questions <laughs> that we were asked, well, and uh, Amy, This thing would weigh a mountain. It would be oh, ridiculous. It would, it would be. However, uh, we've, we've talked about uh, doing a resin with, uh, with uh, Kevlar on the inside to give okay. it a, a bulletproof rating. Sure, that would be that would be really interesting. I mean, sometimes when you're out and you have something taller like this, it is entirely possible if it's hunting season to see an errant round come yep. over. Yep. I mean, you wouldn't expect it or want that to happen, but it is possible. Right. Well, okay. One, well, one of the things that we, we consider is that, that people take this on a road trip somewhere. And if you've ever been on a road trip in a vehicle, uh, especially in an RV, sometimes you have to stop at a truck stop or a Walmart, or a crack Barrel, whatever you're going to stop. And you don't know the part of town you're in. Right? Okay. So you don't know the part of town you're in. You stop, and, you, and say it's late at night, and you want to just go to sleep. And you see some tweakers over there in the corner doing their thing. Well, are you going to want a pop-up tent with a canvas side, or are you going to want an eight-inch aluminum plate where no one you know, could, could take a knife and get into? Sure, and that, that perception of safety, it does a lot. It does a lot for well, people. And also with this vehicle, I mean, you show up with this, they assume you're armed, whether you're, you are armed. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. You don't really roll around like... <laughs> no. No. So if someone has this vehicle, they're going to assume that you have a, a pistol somewhere and that uh, they're not going to mess with you. Also, it's rugged enough to where you're not going to get in this vehicle. If I'm in there sleeping, you're not going to really get in unless I know you're getting in. And by the time you actually do get in, well... You're uh, just working out of a rifle. <laughs> so, okay, so we looked at the inside already. Let's keep rolling around. You've got the steps. Those are Lippert uh, yes. or somebody similar? No, it's a Lippert. Uh, 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 Easy Up, I think they call it? Yeah, yeah I think that's what they call it. I have another box of it over here anyway. So what we I could see do, the Battleborn batteries in there, super high quality stuff. They're not messing around with no. low quality knockoff brands. So what we had to do, we modified this. You can tell that we, we shaved the side. I cut it down substantially. I was going to send this design to them because I could have them manufacture it for me. But what's nice is 
is that it just it literally, you can have it down and shut the door. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even consider that. So, so you can have it out while you're camping and shut the door while you're sleeping in there. That makes a lot of sense for this type of vehicle. Yeah. And also, you have a, a warning light that goes off if it's, if it's left down. Okay. You don't just jump in and drive away with it down. And then it just pops right up and you shut the door and you're off, off to your races. Okay, so we've got some L track here on the exterior. What what is the intent with uh, the L track? Are we going to mount like a table to that? We, obviously, the fuel filler is there, guys. But what I love about the L track is that it's versatile for anything. So, you know, like, take our awning for instance. All right, I wanted to put the uh, ostrich wing uh, 180 up, and they didn't have it in stock, and they were going to have it in stock for a while. They were back ordered. All they had was a 270. So I went ahead and just got this one online. It just worked out really nice. Everyone wants to know what it is. And, and it's really been nice, but uh, anyway, that'll get upgraded. But another nice thing is I can put whatever awning I want up there. Sure. I can put one of those real fancy, you know, uh, uh, electric ones that have the lights and the stereo and all that in there. <laughs> we have the hookups for all that. But uh, the L Track gives us the ability to put whatever we want up there or do a storage option up there. Sure. So customers, in theory, could request something up there that's a little bit different and right. you're like, yeah, we can accommodate. Right, exactly. So and the same thing for the side L Track. I really wanted it to be, and it doesn't have to be actually in that location. You put it on there, uh, on this one. I don't want to cover the wolf head, obviously. Sure. Uh, otherwise, we would have gone back another one. Yeah. But uh, we'll have a slide out kitchen. It'll be right here. Okay, so we're getting, we're, is that that's going to be on all of the production models, or is that an option? It'll be an option. Okay. So we have room to put it there. I know that. Because uh, we did see in the interior stuff that you guys will see later. Uh, we did see the nice galley that you guys have in there. So an exterior thing would definitely not be necessary. Well, and that's, that's what I love about this and what we're doing is that there's it, a lot of the stuff we're doing is modular. So we okay. can add it later. We can add it to production. Um, so we, we, we kept it that way for a reason. And uh, I, you know, like I said, I want this to be something that's versatile and it's not, you're not stuck with the one thing that maybe you, you get out and start using it and say, oh, I'd really like to have this. Or, I'd really like to have that. It's something we can, uh, you know, pivot along the way. Sure, sure. Okay, let's keep rolling around the back here. Okay. So you see the, the rear lights on. We actually uh, custom manufacture these. This was uh, something that we, uh, that I really enjoyed doing. It's, uh, Is that just LEDs in there? It just yeah, they're uh, they're strip LEDs, and uh, the production models will have the same thing. If that's what you want, or we can put an aftermarket light on there if that's what you want. Uh, again, I think it looks nice. It, yeah, I love it. So it is. Uh, Rather labor intensive to make those, but it was awesome to do. So, what do, we, do we call this the garage? Do you have a fancy name for this? I would say it's the garage. Okay. Yes. So this is your basically your outdoor storage. So you'll notice that I don't have any weather stripping on the outside. There's also no weather stripping on the bottom side here, and that has everything to do with the propane being mounted inside. If some uh, leak were to happen, there, there's no penetration uh, air-wise or water from inside here to the inside of the cab. Okay, so this is a separate space. Separate space completely. And it's kept with these vents, uh, so to speak, for because the propane is out here. Because if some leak were to happen, it's heavier than air, so it'll come down here and it'll flow out. Okay. So there's nothing in there that's going to explode. It can't, it can't accumulate in there and explode. Right, so, so you're not you're not going to have a dangerous situation exactly. if that were to leak. That's yeah. not super duper common, but you know, it does happen when stuff gets rattled around. Exactly. You know, the best thing, I think, I can't remember where I heard this, but somebody referred to this type of vehicle as a rolling earthquake. Yes. I, I don't remember where I heard it, but was it you? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So when I first got introduced to this, this type of building, um, Jax was was real uh, adamant and said, hey, well, you're, you're designing and building something that is in a constant earth, state of earthquake. And it is. I mean, if you think about, uh, I built uh, bathrooms and uh, kitchens and, and buses that have gone up many a BLM road. If you've ever been up a BLM road, oh my God, <laughs> they don't of the teeth out of you. I don't care what kind of vehicle you're driving because uh, they, they don't maintain them. So sure. All the washboards are there from 1960. Okay, so we've got a spare tire. The spare tire comes out. So the winch right here is a Sherpa winch, and you can see how it's, it's not under, under load. This right here does not require... Can you show me that one more time? So this is not under load. Cool, okay. Right. So, so the winch itself is not holding the tire up. The boom itself is holding the tire up, and the, the, the kingpin up there goes all the way through to a bolt inside the cab. So it's actually bolted to the, the chassis itself. So that's not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. I don't care what road or what you do on it. So uh, you take off the, the main pin, it'll, it releases from the wall, it comes down, you release the other bolt, 
and it comes all the way down to the ground. Okay. Nice and easy with a winch. Uh, you could have a you know 120 pound guy, girl, whatever, uh, take this thing off. This is 150 pounds, right? Sure. Take that off. And 150 it, pounds. And, and substantial. Take, it's substantial. It's a substantial wheel and tire. So you can take that off and change the wheel yourself. Okay. That's cool. And then you got a couple of packs. Right. So this is only four gallons, obviously, but we, we consider that, you know, say you want the full 10 gallons. We have plenty of room to put a full 10 gallon of, of uh, diesel storage back here in the back. Yeah. There's a lot of space back here that you know, you could you could add, easily add whatever you wanted. Right. Got some lighting up there. That's cool for nighttime stuff. And you've got a, a ladder in this unit. Right. So this this right here was really just designed to. Uh, this is modular storage again. You sure. You got the L track. Maybe L track up top, and it's really designed to be something where, say, I want to put all of my winter clothes back here. So uh, one thing I, I really I really like the Demos uh, shovels. This one's actually the. Uh, uh, stainless steel version. Okay. It's not the aluminum one, so it's, it's a little stainless. more rugged. A little more uh, rugged. Is this meant to be a step? Like, well, I saw this so, at the show, but. So this right here is going to wind up being just like a tabletop. We're going to have a roll top. Uh, so, so like maybe like a workbench? Is that the yeah, idea? Yeah, a workbench. This is just going to have a little chain on there, so it'll step down here. You can put all the stuff you have uh, to do right here. Uh, we might actually put a little tray in there for uh, rogue bolts, that kind of thing. Like a little magnetic tray would be right. super slick in there. Right. Okay, that's that's fantastic. Let's. You know what I said? Doors themselves. I wanted a really heavy duty latch. Wow, that. I don't know if you heard that. Yeah, I did. So it's a really heavy duty latch. This is actually for uh, horse trailers. Okay. And I found this. I was like, oh, that is perfect. So it really, it's really it just it, it sucks everything back in there. Release. So again, super robust. That's kind of the theme here. Yeah. But light. Everything's, everything's made out of aluminum, so it's, it's light. Okay. All right. So you got obviously have another one of those on this side. Yep. Let's keep rolling around the, the other side here. Just take a look at what you guys have. So just like a regular RV, what we did, we actually put your your water and your power on, on this side. So if you're at an RV park, you can actually hook up to city water and run everything off of city water. And you So can, this was your city fill? Yep. And you can uh, hook up to uh, 30 amp uh, short power. power. Short power. Keep everything you know topped off and running. You know what? I don't think I asked you. What's the uh, what's the battery capacity in this thing? So the battery capacity is actually 500 amp hours. We have five 100 amp hour uh, Battleborn batteries and uh, 800 watts of solar. Wow. 3,000 watt uh, inverter, which doesn't really run anything in here. Right. <laughs> because everything was off 12 volt. But uh, it's set up where you can put a microwave in there, or, or if someone wanted an induction cooktop. Which uh, Mike will try to talk you out of. Uh, there's multiple reasons why. I won't get into that right now. <laughs> he did. Anyway. We talked about that uh, for the okay. interior. Okay. Yeah. So that right there is the exhaust ports for the air on the inside. Okay. It's kind of like your max fan on steroids. Right. And we'll see that when we go in the inside. We'll see the inside portion of that. Right. And okay. And then some recovery gear up there, a jack. And again, this goes back to um, we had some someone come by with a bottle jack. It was a it's an aluminum bottle jack that was, that was actually designed for the Humvee MRAP uh, platform. It, it goes up to 36 inches, I believe. Wow! And it weighs I want I was uh, 10 pounds. That's substantial. So, uh, it's a two thousand dollar bottle jack. Two grand. Okay. So that'll and be an that's is it, you get you're gonna mount one of those up there? No, it'll replace that so that comes off. The bottle jack will be in the garage. Okay, got so, it. Again, going to the L track back over here, you can see we have more over here that. Uh, it's just extra storage space. All along the roof edge. Right. You can put kayaks, skis, whatever. My son wants to put a ski uh, rack on this side, or you can put your fishing pole rack on this side. Yeah. Whatever you want I to mean, do. you got lots of options here. Lots of options. This actually, I don't know if uh, uh, Mike showed you, but this actually doubles as a shower. We saw that when we were at the show. You yeah. showed me that. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. That's, that is shower. super cool. And we'll, again, we'll look at that on the inside. But the idea is the, the sink or the uh, faucet swings around and you can use that and in you, the I exterior. Actually, you see how you know, it's low enough where I can reach up in there and grab it. But uh, again, Sorry, short people. <laughs> right. Well, sorry, short people. Yeah. Exactly. That's okay, though. So what, what is this uh, exhaust for? This is the exhaust. This is the intake and the exhaust for the hot water heater. The driver's cap. So one thing, and you've met Slater. He designed this uh, center console. So we we have the, the switches again, right? Yep. 
Oh wow, look, we got the lights up there, we got the lights in the front. There are lights up, we have rock lights underneath. Oh cool, I didn't even notice that, yeah. Front, lights on the side, so when you get to a campsite, you can light up the world around you. So say there's no moon out, you're by yourself. And it's happened to me countless times, it's like, I can't see anything. With this, I designed it to where I can see everything I want. Right, and was, you know, a theme I've talked about in, in my van build is uh, controlling light. Right. And that that transcends all types of light. Controlling light is an advantage that you need. It is. So being able to do that here is, is really cool. I like that. So otherwise, it's a fairly, at least for this prototype version. Well, I've actually had people say they wanted this dash. Okay. Because the dash we're going to be getting has all brand new clusters. All of this goes away. You have a brand new cluster right in front of you. It looks just like a regular car. It's about 12 inches shorter, and so it really comes down to the doghouse right in front, to where you can literally just climb back in the back. I've climbed back in the back with this. It's a little tight, but I can do it. Okay. But uh, with the new dashboard, you'll be able to get back there no problem. So a lot more access. Perhaps what, uh, you know, this is uh, me giving feedback here. I think offering both like a classic and a new version would be really neat, That's especially when, you know, the MSRP on these things is not what I would call cheap and no. it's not supposed to be. No. But that that would be an option okay to, to have it you know old school that's probably what we'll call it is old school yeah that's right? that's a great name for it because honestly i i dig it i love it i've traveled in this thing it's been a blast so mike is now going to give us a rundown of this beautiful interior it's it's honestly not what i would expect inside a vehicle like this it's very like plush and super nice so Tell me about all, all of the stuff that you guys have created here. So it's really interesting that you actually bring that up because that was actually by design. Like I, I actually personally wanted to make this, this super utilitarian and Reed really wanted to make it more, in his words, bougie. Um, <laughs> I like that, it's a good word for this. But he mainly because when you take your wife out somewhere and you bring her into the sterile you know, interior and stuff, that's not very inspiring for her. So when she comes into something like this, and, and, and you, we saw it time after time at the expo, where people would walk in here and be like, you know, the women would walk in and be like, oh, oh, I could I could do her. Right, like, oh, I, I could do this, exactly. sure. And so we wanted to make it appealing to everybody. And so by just, by spicing up the inside, which didn't add anything other than look, um, it, it made it nice for everybody involved, so. And you guys really did a good job picking nice looking materials like this countertop material you've got the nice walls the ceiling looks nice even the tile i love the logo inside the inset into the tile that's a that's primo i like that nice a lot tile, tile. so um so we didn't we didn't spare any expenses and you know when you go to these high-end vehicles you really do have to provide the people they're, they're forking out a lot of money to get into something like this so you really want to give them their their dollar sure and so like we use teak on our little doors here. We're using nice heavy materials for this stuff. We've got extra extra storage down here. Okay, and that's pretty deep too. Right. And the thing is, is like, and this one was what we refer to as our weekend. Um, it's not, though it's 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 more than capable of going all the places that we advertise. Um, it's not something like you would want to go and take for the Pan Am Highway. I mean, you could, but you'd start like trying to stuff things into places that you know, because there's just not a lot of storage available, as you can see. But this one does have that open air environment in here where you walk in and there's so much room. So with... It the, definitely doesn't feel cramped. Right, exactly. With the Pan Am version that we're making, actually we'll have upper storage on both sides. Oh, cool. So it will feel okay. more cramped. But this is, that's the version where you can start putting those trinkets you find and, and all the extra clothes and everything that you would buy for a really long, long trip. Are you guys going to like kind of square out these walls yes. when you do that? Yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Cool. Um, and then coming into the shower, this is kind of one of our, uh, this is actually patent pending right here. Um, so this is our slide out toilet. Awesome. And the whole purpose of this is so that uh, people can uh, take a nice shower. So they'll have plenty of room to come in here. Oh, Oops. that closes off? Yeah, and it closes off. Again, we're using teak for all this stuff, so it's nice and water resistant and it, it'll last a long time. So, but now you have all that room to shower off in here versus you know a wet toilet where you're trying to sit down or, or work around the toilet. Okay. Honestly, uh, when, when I was at the show, I didn't realize that was there. I, I right. didn't take a second to go, where's the toilet? That makes a ton of sense. Right, so being able to pull that out and do your business, there'll be actually, there's a door coming in here. We just haven't decided on which one yet. Okay, there. sure. So we're going back and forth between something simple or more of a firm, uh, rigid door in here. But also, if you came in here and did your business, turn on the fan 
So you got a fan outlet right in the shower. Right here to evacuate any steam or, uh, uh, you know, smells that you might create. Sure, sure, sure. And then also we have a, another one that also, so you can turn on two. That one actually pulls from here. This one pulls from here. You can really evacuate any you burn something on the stove or something. You just so yeah, you got yeah. good circulation. Yes, yes. What kind of heating system do you have in here? Webasta. We're using a Webasta diesel heater. It's it's uh, plumbed directly to the tank in this unit. And those are those are really really efficient too. They, yeah, they from what I understand. Yes, yeah, so we have one in in my, in my school bus over there, and we use it like all through winter. I could sit in one place all through winter with a full tank of gas, and like. By the end of winter, I might have used a quarter tank, and that's wow. like all winter. Wow! So when you're just constantly running, because they just sip, they're so good. And, and it's a small space too. You're not right. trying to heat a whole home off of something. Like and that, that was actually the argument here. We were gonna like pipe some of these things through this here and move them all over. I said, there's no reason to. Honestly, it's such a small space here that when you turn this thing on, you're gonna cool the entire rig very quickly. And the same thing with the heater. The idea of uh, you know creating line loss, you know, by pushing it right. through there, it's just seemed to me like it was just kind of uh, a waste. Of so you, you said it was the Wabasto heater. What kind of AC and where where okay, is all that AC, located? I can't remember the company that makes it. It's actually a 12 volt AC. Is it Cruise and Comfort? Is that who no, it is? Because they, they, they do a tw they do a exterior mount. This is a, this is a, actually I mean a split. Okay. So this actually has the uh, uh, con is it the condenser units on the outside, the evaporator unit, or vice versa. Well, yeah, uh, sure, sure. Um, it's on the inside inside here. And so it actually is it's a totally amazing. See if split. we can see in there. You can, yeah, you can kind of see the tubing coming to these here. Okay. Yeah. What's the deal with this sink here? Tell me about this little area that we've got here. So this is uh, the other half of the galley kitchen here. So we have the uh, the sink. You got your little cutting board here, which is nice to have a separate cutting board. You have the sink. You can actually uh, open up the window here if you feel like rinsing off outside. Or if you want to, uh, or if you're really dirty and you need to. Wow, that's see spray outside. That's the kind of stuff that uh, just just works. Yeah, just works. Yeah, exactly. And this has the uh, the blackout and the bug screen. I did yeah, see that at the, the show. And these are Arctic Turn windows, guys. Arctic Turn. You can go to the screen, which is just bummer. You gotta have a screen. You got to have a screen, or you're gonna be eating bugs. So, <laughs> like I'm telling you from experience. So. Like having the screen on the windows or being able to black it out when you're changing or going to bed or if you need to sure. sleep during the day or something like or that. Or if it's super hot and you're just trying to keep light out, yeah, you know, exactly. keep the heat out. Exactly. Why so, not? And, and it's actually reflective on the other side. I did. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Go like that. It's actually reflective on the outside. So that's that's cool. The windows themselves are double pane also. So that's another little benefit for insulation. What There's, are you guys doing for insulation behind here? Anything? This is two inches of insulation. Two inches? Two inches. So we're, we're running one and a half uh, aluminum tubing for the entire frame. And okay. then we're putting uh, eighth inch plate on the outside of that. But then we're pushing one and a half inches of foam into the into the space that matches the width of the frame, My and goodness. there's another half inch on the outside of that. So tons of insulation. Oh, so yeah. this would it, this would do really well in cold climate. There's and half, hot, I there's guess. There's zero at that rate. thermal bridging throughout the entire view. Wow. Okay. So we talked about the kitchen, the sink area. What kind of stove do we have here? What do we have going we on? Got in a this domestic side? stove here. Uh, you know, easy little electric little, light. Little propane stove there. That's cool. Stove. Two burner. We went all propane in this, and, and except for the diesel here, which runs off of the off of the uh, diesel tank. Sure. So, but it's just the best bang for your buck. You know, there were some arguments about whether or not we should put an elect electric stove in here and stuff. I'm like, well, I mean, we could, but then if you got three days of cloudy weather, it's gonna be cold beans for dinner. And sure. We really don't want people to have to do that. People are very familiar with using, uh, you know, gas stove. It's a preferred stove in the house. Let's use it. Sure. So down here. So uh, initially, and uh, we were going to put the big Dometic, C Dometic CFX in here. Okay. Um, and, and this was a mistake on our part during design. We ordered some tanks. Water tanks are actually right here and right here. So they're under the galley. Just up against the wheel wells. Okay. And uh, we didn't account for something when we ordered it and they came in too tall. Mm. And so, and we just didn't have time to make the expo. We really wanted to get this to the shows and show people what we can do. Again, guys, this we're, we're in the, the prototype. prototype. So um, normally you have the uh, Dometic CFX fridge here. Okay. Fridge and freezer. Instead of this dual, though these dual things actually work pretty well. We have one set up as fridge, one set up as a freezer. I like that. You know, and we have a ton of beer in there. Like you should. Yeah, of course. <laughs> what do you keep in, in a rig like this? A little bit of refreshments. Of course. 
So yeah, that's what, that, that was I do like that that slides uh, slides back in there. It's right. not in the way. And we were gonna put a face on it. We thought about it. We're like, nope. You know what? It just needs to be accessible. It's, it's sometimes. Uh, you know, there's an argument, and it's, it's just a phrase I use all the time, but practical before tactical. You know? I like it. And I like that it. That is, you know, if, if, if you're going to bug out and you're going to, you know, and you're going to have to eat every day, do you want to eat using your K-Bar? Or should you bring a knife meant for processing food, right? Same design details in here where you want to have things accessible and usable, and you want to have a space for everything. So you got to... A trash can, you know, these are things you have to think about or else where is it going to live? Right. It's going to be in the shower 100%. <laughs> <laughs> right, so. right, right. So, so is this is this cabinet over here, is this just more storage? Here, same thing. Okay, uh, so same, same as the other there. side. Also under storage here if you need to have more stuff you don't access as much, but you want to bring in that type of thing. Rad. So, um, yeah. And then again, when you come into the Pan Am design, there's going to be a lot of similar type of roll top stuff here because it was very popular with people and it is very beautiful, isn't it too? Yeah, it looks nice. It's kind of uh, separates the spaces a little bit, right. which I think is important in a, in a situation like this. But when you have it more laid out where you're accessing it from here and uh, is, you know, not at counter level, so you can still get to all the different places and stuff and have uh, significantly more storage inside and out. Cool. What is this teak on the ceilings this as well? This is actually hemlock. Hemlock, huh? Hemlock, and it is, uh, it's actually, it's, it's stained to be very similar to this, but yeah, it's hemlock. And okay. That's a beautiful Get you guys a good actually, look at that. That's really That does design. look super nice. It's just, yeah, it just, it really makes you want to be in here. Yeah. All right, so tell me about what you're sitting on. What, what do we call this? This is our, this, this is the bench seat. This is the bench the seat, okay. The, the, but you know, it's also, you know, you can kind of like, I, I love the uh, quilted stitching on there. I think that looks super yeah, nice. You know, it does kind of have the right race car design to it a little bit. It, it does match our front seats, matches our yellow and gray and black motif that we've gone with on the whole thing. So it did kind of like, it get, kind of pops a little bit. Um, underneath here is actually all the electronics, uh, where we, all the, the solar charge controller, the uh, inverter. This thing is built out. We got a huge charge controller. We use 150 amp, and the reason we did that was so that we could um, incorporate a trailer with an umbilical. So not only would you be able to like go out with your your super cool rig, but if you brought the trailer we're about to release, super secret right now, um, <laughs> the trailer we're about to release actually has an umbilical that allows its solar that it has to augment the solar in here as well as uh, auto generator uh, has a generator in it with a that has its own starter and the, the vehicle if it got too low in power will just tell it to turn on and save itself wow so it's all automatic so it's a smart it's a smart connection between the trailer and this this is the general patent we're calling that the XO I like military it. guys you want to take a peek underneath here okay oh yeah guys that's slick and then we also have a fan here. And this there's is, this is the water tank here. Water, water tank, yeah. Got and the we fan. Have a fan here to cool it off if it gets too warm. And we got the queen size bed up here. And uh, got a couple lights on the side. Yeah, these lights actually have built have built in uh, USB chargers to charge your phones. And Perfect. Stuff. Um, I was going to ask if you had turn that. On, they even have a little red tactical if you want to keep it low. Honestly, and, at, uh, at night that'd be super nice. Exactly. Exactly. You so, know, when you're out, and again, we've got the Arctic Turn in the front, and is this Arctic Turn up here? Arctic Turn skylight, yeah. And again, the bug screens, the blackout, all that kind of stuff, all throughout. Right. Good insulation. That's super smart, and I, I think in a vehicle like this makes a shitload of sense. It really does, and and because it's so insulated, you're not going to be using the, the heater and the air conditioning as much as you would normally in some. Right. You you don't have to waste that energy right. maintaining the uh, climate inside. Yeah, that extra half inch of insulation makes a massive, massive difference. So this is our, the, the Servo GX uh, uh, power monitor. Okay. And uh, it actually communicates with directly wired to all of the different components and the Victron system. And so that gives us a heads up if we're charging, if we're discharging, how much we're using, how much we have left. And it tells me my gray tank, my black tank, so it's just kind of your system monitor yep. for the entire vehicle. Exactly, and, it, and it's really well thought out, and it's super, uh, 
um, expandable, so you can you can add something to this if you wanted to. Sure. It has, if, you, if you had other tanks, you can actually monitor those other tanks. Are you guys planning to have that function with the uh, the umbilical and the trailer? Is that going to be the main thing, or would it be separate? That it it will probably be this because it actually has a, a a programmable function to do something like that. That would be really cool if you could kind of have an integrated system across the two units. Yeah. So you want to make it living being in here as comfortable and as and as easy to use as it is in your house. You don't want to have this big bridge of like this suffering. <laughs> you know, yeah, right, like, right. You just, off. well, you know, you spend a substantial amount of money on a vehicle like this. You just want it to be easy to use so that you feel like you're actually getting the value you want out of it. You don't want to be, at least most people don't want to be worried about technical issues. They want to go use the vehicle and go adventure. And that's why something like this exists to begin with. Right. Well, that's thank you for the rundown on the interior. That's that's freaking cool. Reed, thank you so much you. for the walkthrough. Where can people find out? I mean, they just saw the name on there, wolfrigs.com. Wolfrigs.com. And you guys are on social media as well. We're on social media is Wolfrigs USA on Instagram and Facebook, and uh, which I, you know, just go to our website. Okay. <laughs> now, now the last thing we're going to do, the last thing we're going to do, what do these cost? $350,000 is our base model price. Okay. Um, Does that represent what we looked at here? Yes. That would, that would buy this. Okay. Um, obviously, there's, there's multiple upgrades you can do with uh, more cabinetry. Uh, we talked about the microwave oven. Um, it will, uh, you can put more power into it. You can put more batteries into it. Uh, we've actually talked about doing a fold out solar panel that acts like kind of an, like an awning. Okay. Uh, That'd where, be really interesting. Where, where you stop, it just it slides out. Um, that would probably be the only slide out. I've been asked numerous times if there will ever be a slide out. No, there will never be a slide out on one of these units. Okay. This this was designed and built to be something you can hand down to your kids' kids. This is something you can take out and abuse, and it's still going to be just like the day you bought it. I wanted something that it's, it's not a trailer princess, and it'll get you to the top of the trail, and you'll be able to wave as you go by the Sprinter vans at their own <laughs> camping. I'll be at the bottom. And they'll, have, they'll, get, they'll be able to hike up to you maybe if they can get that far, but uh, it's something you can take anywhere. That's awesome. There you go, guys. The general patent from Wolf Riggs. Very cool.